All right. Welcome to everyone joining this morning. We're going to get started in about three minutes. If you want to go ahead and open up your chat box, let us know where you're listening from. That would be fantastic. And we'll start soon. Good morning, everyone. And then we actually have a poll for you guys to basically call us what to. Aaron, can you launch a poll? poll yeah, well, let's do that a little bit later. Yeah, when everyone's in. Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. So I'm not sure if it shows up right when you log on. Ew. Let me see. There you go. Okay. Yeah, there go. Let's see. There you go. Let's see if people will see it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. Think, okay. yeah, oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay. There you go. People see, there you go. <laughs> All right. Awesome. All right, awesome. Welcome to everyone joining. Yeah, feel free to answer the poll questions and then also open up your chat box. Let us know where you're listening from. And we will start in two minutes. Like, we got a lot of prior practice on it today. A couple of Wisconsin. Where, where, where are you, Wisconsin? Hey, Jeff, good morning. I'm in Wausau. Chris, I'm in the La Crosse area. Oh, cool. All right. Yeah, I, I retired from North Carolina up here. Gotcha. All right. Isn't that what everybody does? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Well, when I when I uh, drive down there, I'll have to uh, reach out. I would love that. Please plan on it. All right. Welcome to everyone joining. Yeah, once again, jump in that chat box. Let us know where you're listening from. And we'll start in a minute. Go Chiefs. Oh, my gosh. Can we oh, kick no. that guy out of here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I'm a Charger fan. Yes, the yeah, though. <laughs> <laughs> that's what i owe me oh my god i got it yeah see how many states we got today we're getting a lot a lot of different states we got a lot of states yeah yeah welcome to everyone funneling in right. and once again open up that chat box if you're just getting on and let us know where you're listening from and i think it, that is the poll still open i it just the poll's open for another minute yeah. so okay. i'm about to let me see. I'm gonna Go ahead and answer that poll as minutes, well. So. Yeah. Awesome. I was a Jets fan. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's rough to be. <laughs> <laughs> um, that might be bandwagon Jets. I mean, they're okay. I mean, this, this year they're doing okay. Yeah. Well, hey, another Chiefs fan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of East Coast today. Uh, okay, I think the poll is good. So I'm about to end the poll right now. I should have result. So, all right. So if I can, you can see my result. I was like, yeah, lots of good. We got a so good we got a lot of and private practice and a few sublease owners as well, which is great. And this is good. So, how much do you know about IPL? A lot of low and brand new. So that's exactly what we want. And to those that are high and moderate, I think you're going to learn something new from Colin today. So it's going to be fantastic. Awesome. Okay, cool. Perfect. All right, great. So yes, a, a reminder right? to everyone who's tuning in, if you're trying to comment, make sure you're commenting to everyone, not just the host and panelists, if that's what your intent is. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Yeah, going to switch that over to, to everyone. Otherwise, only we see it. All right. All right. I think we're going to go ahead and get started. I know people are still funneling in and they'll funnel in for the next 30 minutes. So I want to welcome everyone to another Sunday morning CE event. It's great to see you so many people online and active and engaged and ready to learn about dry eye and IPL. So we're excited for you to be here. A couple quick announcements before we get started with the program. Number one, the eye care group buy is still going on. So that's for the IC100 tonometer and the IC200 tonometer. Go ahead and scan that QR code at the bottom left of your screen if you're interested. Once again, best deal out here for these tonometers. So 4145 for the IC100 and then 4645 for the IC200. Uh, this offer is going to expire at the end of the month. So click now, order now. It's a great deal. And it's something that's really good for building up your practice. No more air puff. Get the eye care tonometer. And in addition to the eye care tonometer, we do have the eye care iodon family that's now joined our group buys. We've got some fantastic deals. And once again, credit to Julie for arranging all these deals. Scan the QR code for this deal down at the bottom left. And once again, this deal is going to expire at the end of the year on December 30th. So take advantage of it now. 
get those tax savings, get that depreciation going and go ahead and get an order in. And Dat has tried this machine out and it is absolutely fantastic. Yeah. He has the Optus in his office, but he's compared it and it's very similar, if not better. And image quality is fantastic as well. Agree. And in our last event of the year is coming up in a couple of weeks. Go ahead and scan that QR code. Please register. It's a non-CE event, but it's something new that we're doing. And it's something called the Million Dollar Net Practice Series. And so the Bryans are going to come on. They have built a practice from scratch. It took them seven years to do it. And they have actually achieved a net of $1 million after owner salaries. So they're going to tell us how they did it, how they scaled, and kind of just their whole blueprint. So it's going to be two hours of just awesome content. They wrote it specifically for us. So scan that QR code and join us in a couple of weeks. All right. And before we get started, we do want to highlight our IPL Pro deal. This is a fantastic deal. If you've seen other IPL devices, you know that they are quite a bit more expensive than this one. And this one does all the same things. And it's available to us ODs. You can scan that QR card below. And I'm going to have Mike come on and talk a little bit more about this. Awesome. Thanks, Aaron. Am I on? You're on. Awesome. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate it, uh, Aaron, for the intro. Um, and also a good thanks to uh, Dax and Julie and Chris for uh, organizing, help organize all this too. So yeah, my name is uh, Mike Chisholm. So I am a practicing OD in the state of Utah and the founder of Optometric Aesthetics. And so I uh, appreciate you guys coming out and spending a little bit of time with us this morning or over on the East Coast this afternoon. Uh, so let me tell you a little bit about myself and uh, why I started this. So I first developed a passion uh, for aesthetic services when I started using Botox to treat fine lines and wrinkles, which quickly led me to opening a med spa. So then I wanted to bring in an IPL. So I'm probably very similar to many of you guys. Um, and I realized really quickly that I could not afford uh, an IPL in my machine or in my office. So I researched uh, the topic and, and uh, in heavy uh, found and wanted to uh, help improve this area. So what I did is I found a way to bring an IPL machine to the market at an unbeatable price. And so uh, we also do a little different, do things a little bit different with optometric aesthetics. So I don't have any sales reps. And so that helps tremendously to keep the cost down. And really I wanted a non-pressure environment. So something that can you can uh, talk with and, and talk with colleagues of who are using this uh, machine. Uh, our team is always ready to answer any questions you have. Uh, all of our trainings and support are done by trained optometrists uh, that have experience in this technology. Uh, so we offer a two-year um, uh, two-year guarantee, a two-year two warranty, excuse me, and a 30-day money-back guarantee. So uh, my goal is really to help further the practice of opt optometry by offering a device that every optometrist can afford. So let me pull up a quick a um, PowerPoint here that kind of talks a little bit about what we offer. If I can find it here. Oops, I think I'm going to steal your screen. There we go. So these are a couple of the machines that I um, am bringing to the market and want to help improve. First is the, uh, what you mentioned, Aaron, is the uh, iLight IPL Pro plus RF, which is pretty neat because it combines two of the best technologies, intense pulsed light and radio frequency. So the unique handles on the system allow for the use of both IPL and RF at the same time, or they also can be used independently, which is pretty neat. So as you see here on the right, there's an IPL handle. So if you look close, there are on either sides of the handle, little metal plates. So those plates allow for the bipolar radio frequency. So it's passing electricity from one side to the other. Um, bipolar radio frequency is one of the safer forms of RF. And with this device, actually the handle, there's the, uh, Plates are spread out for not far enough to be able to get a little deeper penetration up to six millimeters, which is helpful for heating the tissue. Uh, the IPL component is also completely customizable up to six pulses of light and up to energy levels of 50 joules per centimeter squared. Um, the extended head on the handles allow for easy visualization. You can see and treat all types of anatomy. 
Um, and then this also includes the smaller handle to reach all of those small tight areas on the face as well. And then due to the water chilled heads of the RF, this also can treat skin types uh, one through six. Uh, both handles, the filters, all of the accessories and shipping is all included uh, in the uh, purchase price as well. So our uh, machine is FDA approved for aesthetics. Next, let me show you uh, what I'm super excited about as well is the iLight LED Pro, also known as the triple LT or the low level laser or light therapy. Um, so just a few highlights about this. Uh, there are uh, high amounts of energy up to 155 milliwatts and over 40,000 hours of usage with keeping energy levels above the 100 milliwatts level. So in other words, what does that mean? Uh, this means that there are high levels of therapeutic energy that lasts a long time. And this helps to minimize or almost eliminate the consumables. So my goal is with all my devices is to minimize consumables and be bring more value to your practice. Uh, so this is a pretty quick 15 minute treatment. It's done by technicians, um, but it heats up the skin on the tissue and even up to that 43 degrees Celsius, which is really helpful to, to melt oils. Um, red light also stimulates the production of ATP in the cellular level for a better function of our cells, uh, and that's called the photobiomodulation. So there's a aesthetic package, which also includes the colors blue, yellow, red, and infrared. So there's a lot of different aesthetic benefits you can use for all of those as well. So just wanted to share those with you. That one will actually be launching in January of 2023. So FDA approval is uh, pending for this month. So uh, next month, uh, we should be bringing that to the market. And at the end here, we'll talk about, let me see here. Oh, here we go. I wanted to get out there. So at the end, we're going to be uh, talking a little bit more. If you have any questions about the machine or questions about um, anything to do with uh, the promo, and we'll talk about all the deals and everything we got going to. So I will hand the time back to you, Aaron. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much, Mike. And he's going to be back on after the lecture to talk more about this. We're going to have a great panel event happening. And one thing I do want to highlight before we jump into the CE event is this is an OD run company. And so as ODs, I think it's important that we support fellow ODs. That's how we keep our profession strong. So Mike, hats off to you for running a company that's OD focused and that focuses on IPL and everything that goes along with it. Awesome. Thank you. All right, perfect. So yeah, we're going to jump right into our hour of Cope Approved CE. So Colin, get ready. I'm going to do a quick intro for you, and then the floor is all yours. So Colin Gray, after graduating BYU, attended University of Houston College of Optometry and graduated in 2020. He emphasizes in ocular surface disease, aesthetics, and specialty contact lens fittings. He won the Utah Optometric Association's Young Optometrist of the Year in 2021, and his practice was awarded Cooper Vision's Best Practices in 2022. He currently serves on the membership and legislative committees for the Utah Optometric Association. And Colin's got a great presentation coming for you. So Colin, go ahead and unmute and you can take the floor. All right, thank you. Let me find my presentation here really quick. Um, I have been dealing with a sick baby for the last week who had RSV. So you might notice my voice might kind of come in and out. So I'll be drinking a lot of water, which um, just, just FYI. <laughs> and then also I have some notes down here. So if you make, see me looking down, that's just what I'm looking at. But yeah, today we're going to be talking about utilizing advanced technology um, for dry eyes and aesthetic treatments in your practice, which has been amazing in my practice. And so that's kind of just what I want to talk about with you guys. And it's been kind of that nice hot buzz with IPL kind of gaining track and um, becoming more available, more affordable. So. I think it will be a good discussion for us. Uh, to start off, this is my financial disclosure. <laughs> um, none. I don't really represent anyone. Um, Colin, uh, you need to share your screen. Colin, can you share your slide? Oh, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> that will help, huh? View option, share screen. There we go. Is that better? Yep. There's no more right now. Okay. Awesome. Uh, yep. Yeah, great. Awesome. <laughs> so yeah, uh, here's my financial disclosure. Um, I don't have anyone that I am answering to or uh, working for, which is great. 
And I think it helps me just to help you guys know that this is, yeah, purely technology that I use in my office, um, that I use with daily patient care and that I have experience with. Um, so I'll give you my experience of what works and what I found hasn't worked it quite as well. And um, yeah, and then yeah, about me, Aaron covered it pretty darn well, but BYU for my undergrad, um, had my two-year mission in Argentina, which was awesome. Got to see uh, a lot of cool things there. And then getting back from my mission, finished up at BYU in microbiology, got married to my wife and we have one kid. Um, and then we went to Houston for optometry school, which was a big change coming from a small town of Lehigh, Utah, about 15,000 people in our city growing up. And now it's exploded and it's probably about 60, 70,000 people. Um, during my rotations at Houston, I was part of the Lackland kind of surgical team doing post-op care with LASIK and all the surgeries they did at their Air Force base. And then I also got, got selected to go into the dry eye clinic at the University of Houston, which was great. Learned a lot from them. Um, and then upon graduating, May 2020, prime COVID time, luckily my dad is an optometrist and he was able to give me a job. <laughs> so I currently work here at the Eye Care of Lehigh. I um, am just an associate optometrist. As of maybe a couple months ago, I officially owned four and a half percent. So slowly buying into the practice and giving my dad more time to go and have fun into that early retirement, which has been awesome for him. Um, I've implemented myopia control, more scleral lens fittings, um, a lot of more aesthetics and surface treatments for dry eyes. And so it's been a good little one-two punch with me and my dad, where he tends to focus more on posterior segment. And I do a little bit more anterior segment and pediatrics. So um, in January, I'm going to be working part-time with Rocky Mountain University Health Professions here in Provo, the new optometry school. Um, they've soft offered me a job there to do ocular service and aesthetics, maybe a kind of elective course there. And then also helping out in the first year clinic lab, which I did a lot of in school, which was awesome. Um, and I've been using IPL for about six years now. My dad was either the first or the second. We weren't quite sure, um, but we were either the first or the second clinic to own an IPL machine for optometry in Utah. And uh, he started using it pretty well and was doing really well doing it because I was the one kind of helping him and being the tech, setting up the patients, doing a facial, cleaning them off, right? And then as I left and was kind of in school, coming back and forth, he didn't utilize it super well. And then since graduation, I've been using it a lot in the last three years. Um, and let's see. Yeah, I have that ocular surface disease and aesthetic emphases. That's just kind of what I like to do. I thought at first graduating, I actually wanted to do maybe vision therapy, but then getting back to Utah, the third driest state in the nation, I just saw my patients needed dry eye help. So that's where I kind of verged into. Um, something I've been doing on the side, just like Mike was saying, I'm trying to start a med spa. Uh, I've been doing that for the last about year-ish with one of my buddies from high school, who's kind of the numbers guy, and I'm the doc that's helping start it, but we call it Summit Beauty. And our goal is hopefully to open a um, med spa location where we can do all these aesthetic treatments and I'll hire a nurse practitioner to come help me out as well. We're in kind of some discussions with some nurse practitioner friends that maybe want to do that with us. But the hardest thing right now is just real estate in Utah is going crazy. So we haven't been able to find a good location at the cost that we're hoping for. Um, but that, I think that's going to be a good future for us as well. Um, yeah, currently I work for the right volunteer on the UOA. I'm in charge of membership and that's been going really well as well. Uh, our membership's been up about 8% in the last two or three years since I joined, which I think is kudos to me and kudos to our team. And then our student membership, that's kind of been my focus. So I actually go and meet around with a lot of people, a lot of different schools, telling them about Utah, what our scope is, pros and cons of living here. So our student membership has gone up about 200%, which has been amazing. 
Um, and then this last little section, I think this is kind of my motto. I can't remember the doctor. She came and talked to our, at our UOA annual meeting, but she had a good little saying and I kind of took that and ran with it. And I think, yeah, everyone has ocular surface issues or ocular surface disease until proven otherwise. And that's kind of the game plan and mentality I take into every exam, every comprehensive exam, contact lens exam, follow-up. So um, I think as we talk about these things, something that you can take back into your practice is, yeah, just have that mentality. Treat every patient like they have dry eyes and let their eyes prove you wrong, okay? Um, so let's talk about dry eye in my clinic. Um, I feel like this is kind of the most common causes in my office. Most 85%, I think that's low balling it. I'd say 90, 95% really is going to be evaporated. Kind of that dry eye from my bromian gland dysfunction. Um, very few, well, fewer I'd say are more aqueous deficient. Lacrimal gland secretions aren't there. That tear meniscus is very low. So we just have to ramp up the tear production. Um, and then also we get a lot of post-ops. I work very closely with a lot of ophthalmologists here locally and we do a lot of co-management. So I'd say a lot of that post-LASIK or post-cataract surgery, post-retinal surgery, we get a lot of surgical dryness in my office as well. Excuse me. Most patients that come into my office, I think the two main chief complaints we're getting a lot nowadays, at least in the last year, maybe it's probably the same nationwide, but headaches from computer work or um, kind of the stress tired eyes and dry eyes, irritated eyes, red eyes. Those are always, every single patient has one of those types of cheese complaints. So we'll kind of focus on that dryness. And I feel like this is pretty much, <laughs> excuse me, every patient that comes into my office. Can you guys see my mouse? My cursor? Yep. Okay, perfect. So I feel like every time I look under the slit lamp, I see that injection on the bulbar conge, I pull down on the lid margin and I see these nice telangic tasia vessels going on. You can see the meibomian glands. Some of them look pretty good. Some of them look maybe a little bit swollen, right? You can see this blepharitis hanging out, that nice biofilm in between all the eyelashes. And then this patient actually came in because they have a little sty, a um, little internal cordial and hanging out there. Um, so that's something that they actually came in for. But I've been seeing an uptick in styes and an uptick in patients that look like this. Um, we currently have, we've been seeing about 25 to 30 patients a day uh, between me and my dad. And 15 of those are typically comprehensive exams with just glasses or adding on that contact lens fitting as well. Um, 10 of those are typically dry eye specific. And that means more of uh, some follow-ups possibly or an initial dry eye exam. I see them for the comprehensive, tell them to come back for that initial dry eye visit. Uh, IPL, serum tears, um, and all those kind of associated dry eye visits. So that's about 10 of them. And then the last five are either red eye emergency visits or post-ops. So that's kind of the breakdown of our clinic. But every single one of my comprehensive exams is going to be seeing an eye that looks like this. Red, irritated, maybe a little bit puffy. Doc, I've tried out these over-the-counter drops and they just don't work. So what can we do about that? Here's some nice videos that I've taken the last... Actually, this is just the past week. <laughs> so um, the first picture, this is actually one of my friends. She came in and saying, hey, I, I just get these red irritated eyes. I do a lot of YouTubing and I have my channel. So I just noticed my eyes are always super red. And you can see how thick those extensions are. You can barely see past the tips of them. I'm trying to look at all the bluff that's hidden underneath. Um, but just all that caked... Uh, that cake kind of proteins and deposits that's hanging out in between all the eyelashes. That just looks nasty. It's gross. Um, second video down here, you can see all that saponification. 
all that meibomian gland issue that's happening that's causing kind of that foamy tears. Excuse me. And it's making it so that those tears are just not spreading very well. Yeah, nice soapy tear film, kind of that undulated uh, lid margin. And let's see. And under a different little saturation, my camera is a little bit different, but you can actually see there's a lot of these little vessels hanging out in between those glands as well. Might be hard to kind of see on the broadcast, but um, <laughs> excuse me. The other thing with these two videos, look at that sleeve, that collarette, that nice Demodex hanging out. Everyone has Demodex. It's just how much is not hanging around the eyelashes. And I feel like I've been seeing a lot more recently in my clinic that is just causing too much irritation and too much of a bacterial bio load there. Um, yeah, this is just some more examples of something I feel like we all probably see in our office very frequently. And here's some more. That nice um, tear or sorry, that nice lid margin that's getting a little bit swollen, nice red eyelids. This patient actually has been rubbing so much that they're starting to kind of almost bruise, get that petechial hemorrhage on the surface. You can actually see a swollen meibomian gland there. Um, let's look down here, a lot of bleph, right? Here's some nice meibomian gland images. If you can have a guess how old this patient was, Maybe five years ago, you'd be like, oh, yeah, maybe 60s, 70s, right? This patient is 14. So um, she's having not so much of a happy time <laughs> with her meibomian glands. But I'm starting to see a lot more of that nowadays. Patients taking Accutane, helping out with that kind of cystic acne, but also destroying the meibomian glands. <clears throat> and then here's some more things that we're seeing. Um, first picture, how painful does that sucker look? Woo, nice and big and swollen. Um, I feel like those are becoming a lot more frequent in my office, in my exam room. Just a lot of big, irritated, infected eyelids. And then this patient down here actually was diagnosed with myasthenic gravis. And so he's been having a lot of hard times with his lid closure. He has a lot of SPK. And then down here underneath this nice mucus, he actually has a little ulcer starting to form due to his dryness. So we've been helping manage him with some membranes. And also we just fit him in some scleral lenses for that daytime. Yeah, you can see that nice little ulceration open up right there. Um, but yeah, we've been trying to do some scleral lenses to help him with that daily dryness. Um, this third one up here, I actually was seeing a new patient who I think was maybe five or six, just kind of a pediatric exam. And then I just told the mom, I was like, hey, I kind of noticing some dryness with your kid's eyes. Are they doing a lot of screen time? What's going on? And so um, she was then curious because she's had LASIK and we co-manage with the surgeon quite a bit, but this patient didn't come to us for their co-management, but she was just noticing, yeah, I mean, a lot of ton of dryness. I've had, she said she had LASIK three times. So I'm assuming that maybe she had some epithelial ingrowth that they had to open up the flap, scrape that off, put the flap back. And you can kind of see how the margins of that LASIK is a little distorted, right? So another patient that we're dealing with dryness just from post-LASIK. And this patient was actually my last patient on Friday. <laughs> he is a typical Lehigh native. Um, Lehigh, if you don't know anything about Utah, there's two main cities. There's Salt Lake City, which is our capital, about a, maybe 45 minutes south is Provo, which is where BYU is. I'm right in the middle, about halfway between Salt Lake and halfway between Provo. Lehigh used to be a big farming community. Um, my dad was a farmer. My grandpa was a farmer. Um, and so we get a lot of these older Lehigh people coming in that just work hard, but never see the doctor. <laughs> so he came in and said, oh, I've been having irritated eyes. I don't really do much about it. Um, never actually really worried about it. And then when I was asking him more about it, he told me he gets styes about six times a year. Um, and he just handles it by just waiting, 
kind of does maybe a patch. He says he, when he's working outside on his film, he tends to actually just put like a patch on his eye just because it hurts. And that helps relieve his symptom. Um, he's seen a doctor before and the doctor just said, oh yeah, just do some warm compresses. And that's really all you can do. But that was about 15, 20 years ago when he saw that doc. Um, so you can notice one thing we're going to be talking about quite a bit is this look at the cheeks, the nose, right? You can even see up here, forehead, all these little blemishes, even pigment spots that we can help them out with. But the biggest thing, man, look at that rosacea, right? That surface inflammation, that dermatological inflammation that's happening. Um, let me see here. And kind of the next couple of slides we're talking about MGD and what we can do to help out with MGD and hopefully take care of a lot of inflammation. So <clears throat> what causes MGD? I just kind of threw down a lot of common things that I get in my office, right? This is not a complete extensive list as I'm sure a lot of you are well aware. Um, I get a lot of overweight people, people that have high cholesterol, high triglycerides, just kind of that gland inflammation that we're getting. Um, excuse me, allergy season's kind of upon us here. Uh, Utah is a beautiful state, but the one thing I think that we have going against us is, I mean, we have the Rocky Mountains to the east and then the Ochre Mountains to the west. And so any type of storm that comes in, it clears out our valley which is nice, but if we don't have a storm for a long time, we get this weird inversion that just hangs around. So we have a high, I feel like we have a really high uh, allergic conjunctivitis um, prevalence here, just based on our mountains kind of enclosing us in. Um, but that allergic conjunctivitis with all the swelling and all the follicles, we tend to get a lot of friction inflammation is what I call it. Um, and once that friction inflammation becomes so apparent and so long and just stayed there for a while, then yeah, we get that nice LWE, lid wiper epitheliopathy. Um, if you don't know what that is, that's just right at the lid margin that comes into contact with the globe, becomes kind of keratinized and almost scarred over, I'd say. So it just creates more friction on every blink. Okay, it doesn't get a nice smooth closure. Um, so yeah, more in friction inflammation from that and blepharitis main three ones that I see Demodex is probably number one squamous is number two and seborrheic is number three, that infectious bacterial inflammation hanging out, bringing those nice telangiectasia vessels to the surface to help fight off infection, causing a lot of swelling. Um, another big thing we see here is autoimmune issues, um, we get a lot of rheumatoid arthritis, lupus, ankylosing spondylitis, idiopathic arthritis and, and kids. So um, those autoimmune issues that are affecting the joints are also something that I think can affect my bony glands, the lacrimal gland, the goblet cells on the surface of the eye. So we have to be aware of that. Um, then dermatological, der dermatological issues, the biggest thing I'm seeing is, yeah, rosacea. Um, you know, surface uh, vessels that come to the surface to help fight off maybe some type of dermatitis or skin infections that they are trying to help out with, but they're doing good fighting off infection, but also bringing a ton of inflammation to the surface, making it really hard for your meibomian glands to function. Um, and then, yeah, that allergic dermatitis, as you get those puffy, irritated eyelids, probably from some type of blepharitis or um, just some irritation around the eyelid, see my patients are rubbing a lot, then they get that frictional <clears throat> um, issue just from the surface of the epithelium on their skin, and then they're getting that allergy co component coming in, so it just makes them want to rub more, makes it so all that inflammation is just located right around the eyes. Um, another big thing in younger populations that I'm seeing is Accutane, um, the retinoids from medications is causing some uh, medication inflammation. So a good uh, destroyer of those meibomian glands is that nice Accutane. And then, sorry, ladies, <laughs> the prevalence of meibomian gland dysfunction is actually a lot higher in women due to hormonal issues, pregnancy, menopause, 
all those hormones that are causing a lot of other fun things for you ladies is also causing those glands not to function 100% and making those glands atrophy sooner than we probably want. Um, the conventional type of treatment for meibomian gland dysfunction, this is actually, this, this little table here is from the dues report. If you haven't read through that, I definitely recommend you read through that. Talks a lot of, about a lot of good physiology issues that we have with dryness. And then it gives us a good step-by-step -step process, how to treat dry eyes. So if you're interested, I saw about half of us maybe <clears throat> don't know a whole ton about IPL, but maybe there's a few more that is like, ah, I don't know anything about dry eyes. And I think that is a great place to start. Step one, step two, and then kind of go step-by-step -step figuring out how we can treat the dryness of our patients. But step one, I kind of call this the conventional way or maybe the outdated way of treating MGD. First thing is just education. Um, with those high triglycerides, high cholesterol, we're going to educate them on diet, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, maybe adding a humidifier to their environment, maybe decreasing their AC in their car that's affecting the surface of the eye, causing those glands to swell up, um, teaching them about blink rates and complete lid closure during those blink rates. There's a bunch of studies that tell us that about a third, or when we're on computer screens or doing detailed work, we blink about the third the amount we should. Our blink rate goes from maybe once every four to five seconds to once every 20 seconds. So instead of getting that nice lid closure, that pressure from the eyelids hitting, causing those meibomian glands to excrete, we're just sitting there staring. And then we typically have this little kind of flinching blink that doesn't get that complete closure and cause the meibomian glands to express. So good education about that. They're doing a lot of um, computer work. There's that classic 20-20-20 rule. Every 20 minutes, take a 20 second break. I tell them to do big closure blinks, kind of squeezing blinks and um, try to look 20 feet away let those eyes decompress and relax, right? Um, Another thing I advise my patients, if they're not already taking an omega-3, that I recommend that they take at least a thousand milligrams of DHA and EPA combination. Um, there's a lot of different branches to omegas. I'm sure most of you are aware. Three, six, nines. Six and nines are typically pro-inflammatory. Threes are anti-inflammatory, the good omega-3s we want. But even further, omega-3s is branched down. There's ALA, EPA, and um, DHA, ALA, or sorry, DHA and EPA are the two that I think really affect my bulimia and glands the most. And that's what the research shows as well. Um, and the recommended dose is a thousand milligrams if they have nothing. Um, a lot of patients, they'll tell me, yeah, I'm taking omega-3. I'm like, okay, well, take this one to be eye specific, right? We know the omega-3s you're already taking are probably helping out with gut, skin inflammation, well, let's just take this added omega-3 to help out with your eyes. And if they are already taking a thousand milligrams combination, I'm like, okay, let's up that dose. Let's go 2000 or 3000 even, right? And the pictures that you'll see are things that I use in my office, okay? So the omega-3 that I recommend is from Oasis Tears. It's nice just because it's one pill. Yes, it is a little bit larger pill, but thousand milligrams is just one pill a day. And I know Hydro Eye that you have to take a few different pills and there's a lot of other um, omega-3s where they might have to take six to eight pills a day to get the recommended dose. But I just think it's nice and easy. One pill, thousand milligrams. Um, diet modification is a big thing. If they're eating a lot of fried foods or anything like that. Great. Just tell them, lower that. Get more on a kind of a Mediterranean diet is what I call it. More olive oils, not press, processed oils. Um, maybe we notice they might be symptomatic of other autoimmune issues. Oh yeah. I've kind of been having some back pain or my wrists have been hurting. I type a lot. And by the end of the day, I just can't type anymore. Let's refer them and just do some blood work. See if they might have an underlying autoimmune issue that might be affecting the lacrimal gland and, and affecting those meibomian glands as well. Um, <clears throat> most people that are coming to me specifically for dry eyes, have already tried some type of ocular lubricant. Um, but maybe you have one that you feel like works really well in your environment and where you're practicing. I personally haven't found a really good one. 
most people have tried to refresh or sustain or um, uh, know, some other ones, right? But I just personally haven't found a good ocular lubricant that I like, so I don't really recommend it. But if you find one that you feel like works for your patient population, awesome, have them try that. Um, let's see. I usually tell my patients the reason I don't like over-the-counter lubricants is that I kind of just say, hey, you have a broken bone. I don't think slapping a Band-Aid is going to help. I think we need to treat the underlying issue that's causing me this pain and this irritation. So just using ocular lubricants, like, yeah, it makes you feel better for a couple minutes. But there's something underlying going on that we need to figure out. And then the last thing is eyelid hygiene. Um, with all that blepharitis and Demodex, you're definitely going to want to make sure you have that cleared up and maintained even before you start doing an IPL or any other treatments. Um, and these are the cleansers I usually recommend in my practice. I really like the daily facial cleanser. It's very eye friendly. It doesn't have non, or it has non-toxic ingredients that are safe for around the eyes. And then one thing I've also noticed is people come in and asking me, more aesthetic wise, hey, I have these small wrinkles or kind of dark spots around the eyes. I like the nourishing eye serum and the anti-aging serum. Um, the company is called Sukavu and they're great. Easy to work with. You can order directly from them. Um, you can supply it in your office. So it just makes it easy for patients. Um, so now let's talk about more advanced treatments. Um, expression is something that you'll want to be able to add into your practice, no matter which type you're doing. I personally, in my practice, only do manual expression. Um, excuse me. I like to be in control and know how much pressure I'm doing. Um, I feel like it keeps me a little bit more involved with the patient as well, instead of just kind of sitting them and letting them go and do lip of flow or um, the eye lux. Um, I also am not a big fan of consumables with products. If someone tries to come get me a new technology, I always ask, okay, what do I have to pay you for every time that I do a treatment? So I'm not a big fan of Lipaflow due to the cost on that. Not a big fan of ILX just due to the cost. I haven't ever really considered tear care, but I know a lot of docs in Utah are using that. Um, and you can do manual expression afterwards. Um, but I personally just like to do manual expression after uh, heating up the glands with IPL or RF and getting that taken care of. Um, uh, look down here. So now, yeah, how do we control the inflammation? That's the biggest thing uh, on that previous slide when we were talking about MGD and all the causes. You notice I just put inflammation after every single one. It it really is just inflammation. So how do we control that, right? Because I could go in and do expression, but on this patient here, I can go in and do expression, but if I don't take care of the inflammation. They're going to be back in my chair maybe a month, two months later, wanting more expression, right? So I'm not really solving the issue. I'm just putting a Band-Aid on. So I don't ever recommend expression by itself. I need to combine it with some type of anti-inflammation treatment, which is exactly what IPL is for, and I love it. Um, I saw there was a question earlier when Mike was presenting about depths that are included or filters that are included with the um, uh, the machine that he has. And we talk about the different depths and the filters because we are trying to target different layers of the skin, depending on which type of treatment we're trying to get. So some of that cystic acne that some people get, it's more superficial. So we're going to use a more almost ablative type of filter to help out with that surface skin. Then when we're talking about rosacea, we're going to be using a 560 or 590 filter to kind of get where those rosaceous uh, vessels are hanging out, right? And then, yeah, a lot of IPL machines, you can do laser hair removal and then skin tightening or overall skin rejuvenation. Usually there's kind of a all, all the way through the type of skin or all the way through the skin filter that we're gonna be using to get all the layers. Um, the exact mechanism, I have some notes down here, I'm gonna kind of, uh, mooch off of, but the exact mechanism of IPL isn't exactly known, but there's a lot of theories. And on the AAO website, they have kind of their big seven things that are going on whenever we do IPL treatments. Um, it's one, warming up the meibomian glands. 
to facilitate expression and release of the mybome. Um, it's improving the function of mybomian glands. That was two. Three, it's inducing intravascular thrombosis of the small blood vessels surrounding the mybomian glands. And the telangiectasia of the eyelid margin, reducing the levels of pro-inflammatory mediators that contribute to dry eye. So breaking that down, whenever we have vasculature coming, it's good. It's bringing oxygen. It's bringing all these anti-inflammatory properties to wherever the inflammation is going on. But it's also bringing a lot of pro-inflammatory cytokines, proteins, everything like that that's going to make swelling happen um, and make the surrounding tissue just not function at 100%. So yeah, IPL is making it so we're reducing those pro-inflammatory mediators because we're taking care of that vasculature, right? Um, number four, reducing tear osmolarity, helping to control the inflammation on the surface of the eye, which was one of the key factors for dry eye pathology. A lot of people do osmolarity testing in the office. Excuse me. Um, number five, we're reducing Demodex. Demodex are super light sensitive. And so there's a cool video. I think it's Dr. Perriman that has it on YouTube, but there's a cool video that she just has a, a Demodex on a little slide, a microscope slide, and she does pulses of IPL on it. And I think after three or four pulses, you can see that Demodex explode. So we are treating Demodex blepharitis right at the source by right? just destroying those Demodex. And it's nice because IPL, it's getting underneath the skin as well. So it's not even those surface demodex that we're worried about. It's getting those ones that are already near the meibomian glands, near the hair follicles that are kind of sleeved up and protecting themselves. Um, number six, which is more the aesthetic side, we're improving cellular functions, <coughs> excuse me, such as uh, stimulating collagen and stimulating fibroblasts and having them help regenerate the skin. And then also improving the motility in immunoregulatory cells. So yeah, IPL is great for skin rejuvenation, stimulating the fibroblasts, which build the, have the building blocks of the skin, making kind of that puffiness. And then collagen comes in and fills in those gaps. So you can get help with those wrinkles in the crow's feet and also those little superficial wrinkles that we get around our mouths and our cheeks. Um, and the last thing is it induces a neurotrophic effect on the cornea and also a neuroimmunomodulatory effect on the meibomian glands. So it's overall decreasing information, helping the pro or the good cells fight the fight. Um, here are a few pictures of some IPL machines on the market. Here's the iLight that Dr. Chisholm was talking about. Here's OptiLite. Here's the M22. This is the Sinusure one. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so yeah, lots of things on the market, but as we've already talked about, these are ones that were first made for dermatology and dermatology expenses, <laughs> where the nice thing about iLight, where it's made by an optometrist, optometrist owned and optometrist focused. So um, you can see that reflected in a lot of different things that we're doing. Here is a typical treatment pattern that we use all the time when we're doing IPL treatments. So if you don't know kind of the pathway or how this is gonna be implemented in your office, when a patient comes in and you diagnose them with MGD with rosacea or ocular rosacea, and then you say, okay, come back for IPL. This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna have the patient come in. They're gonna fill out a kind of questionnaire about their skin. It's called the Fitzpatrick scale. And it'll ask them simple questions like, hey, when you go out in the sun, let's say you're at the beach, what happens to your skin if you're not wearing um, sunscreen? Do you immediately burn and peel and blister? Do you kind of burn and then blister later? Do you burn and then suddenly turns into a tan? Or do you just tan and never have to use sunscreen? Um, kind of questions like that. And it's like, oh, how often do you go sunbathing? How often are you using retinoids or any um, Accutane, anything like that, right? Um, but the Fitzpatrick scale is going to help us diagnose maybe what type of skin we're going to be treating. In my community, we're typically two to four, I'd say, an occasional one, an occasional five. I have personally, I wouldn't 
honestly ever treat myself a type six. Um, the way IPL is working, it's working on melanocytes and pigment. That's kind of what helps capture that light. And so if you're treating five and six, I'd be a little bit more cautious just because you are probably more susceptible to causing a burn, which is what we don't ever want. Um, yeah, so they'll fill out this little Fitzpatrick scale and then also they're um, signing any documents or forms about treatment. And then when what we do is we bring them back to our third room, which is kind of our spa room. And I have one of the technicians just do a little microfacial, cleaning up the skin, making sure we're getting rid of all that makeup, um, getting rid of any of those proteins or debris or loose dead skin cells on the surface of the face, just kind of doing a nice little facial to clean everything off, give us a nice surface to use. <laughs> and then what my technicians do in the office, they will go based off of the skin type. Let's say um, we have a skin type two person coming in here. And so they'll plug in the pre-programmed settings type two, we're doing NGD treatments, and it will automatically just kind of put in the settings for us, which is nice. And then um, we'll put a lot of just ultrasound gel to give us a nice conductive surface. It's also a little bit of cooling to help the skin be soothed as well. But we're applying ultrasound gel at this area called the tr uh, tragus or zone three. So cheekbone, nose, cheekbone. And then my technician, We'll do a little kind of spot treatment. I usually do it right over here, almost hidden on their cheekbone. But they just do one little blast and see how the skin reacts. What I'm looking for is basically a mild erythema or a mild reddening of the skin. I don't want it to pulse and then immediately turn red. That's too quick. I'm looking for a pulse and maybe like a 10, 15 second delay. And it just kind of turns uh kind of medium, medium rare skin, if you want to think about it that way. <laughs> um, just a little subtle pinkness on the skin. So after that little test pulse, I go back and see other patients. And then I have my technician doing pulses along the zone three. Okay. And you can kind of see, this is drawn out pretty well, but you want a slight overlap in between each pulse. Okay. So you want about a 20, maybe 30% overlap is what I do. Yeah, you're doing one pulse all the way across and then a second pass again. So you do it twice. And after my technician's done, that's when I come in and we're using a lot of different settings that I just think, hey, your patient's already here. You're already sitting in the chair. You're already, skin is, your skin's already prepped. So let's just do a complete facial. Let's talk about any pigment spots that you want relieved or any blemishes that you want help with, or let's just do a skin rejuvenation treatment while you're here, right? And so I'll put ultrasound gel, all over, and kind of a side note, you always wanna use clear ultrasound gel, just because any of those tinted ones might make the effectiveness of the IPL pulse either too much, too strong, or it absorbs too much. So always use clear ultrasound gel. Um, but yeah, so after I apply all the gel, I am just doing a complete facial using different settings that I've learned, um, depends on what the patient wants as well. But after that, we just clean them off, do another little facial scrub and post-care treatment for the skin to help it heal better. And then they are on their way. The first visit, typically I'd say it's gonna last about 45 to 60 minutes, just doing a lot of paperwork, figuring out the settings we need to do, the test spot. Um, and usually their second, third, fourth visit, it's 20, 30 minutes. Um, well, I'd say 15 minutes with me and then probably 30 minutes overall. They come in, we do a facial scrub with my technicians. My technician will do a two passes and then I'll come in for the last maybe 10, 15 minutes to complete the facial and then they're out the door. So here's one case of IPL that I have seen over the last year. So she's a 57 year old white female. Um, she has severe telangiectasias on the superior, superior and inferior margins. Yeah. A lot of rosacea on the cheeks, the chin, and the nose. When I try to do expression in the office, just with my thumb or with our little expressor that we have, um, a lot of inspissated glands, and then turbid expression on 90% of the glands. There's a few, maybe 10% that are functioning pretty well. And she does not tolerate expression well. 
She doesn't tolerate me even touching her eyelids because those eyelids are super hypersensitive. And I flagged that just because that is something I'll kind of touch on a little bit later. But just remember those hypersensitive eyelids. Her T-butt was very poor, less than two seconds, both eyes. We also have a non-invasive tear breakup time machine that we use here. Um, it's made by Phoenix, I believe. It's um, yeah, it does pretty well, but it gives us a knit butt that we can do with contacts on. And typically what I've seen is contacts makes the knit butt a little bit better. So yeah, still four seconds in between blinks that she gets comfortable tears. And then she's also taken a prostate gland for glaucoma treatment. And then a lot of SPK on the inferior third, telling us about those incomplete closures, right? And so my diagnosis is MGD with associated ocular and adnexal rosacea. And we are going to do a treatment of four IPL sessions, blefx, and then manual expression as well. So here is what she looked like coming into my office. Um, right here, this is before we did treatment. You can see those nice vessels, you got nice webbing right there with the rosacea. Nice one right there. In the corners, typically I notice you get these larger vessels. They like to kind of accumulate on the, <clears throat> on the corners of the nose. And you also just take note of all these little pigment blemishes, right? All these tiny little pigments that we have here. The other thing that you can't see on her chin down here, she has a big patch of um, rosacea as well. But, excuse me, this is before we did treatment. This is immediately after. So you can kind of see that nice pink tone that we're looking for, right? So let's just look at this webbing just left of it. You can kind of see the natural skin tone. The webbing just left of it's a little bit more pink. And you'll notice when you start to do rosacea treatments, the rosacea typically around it gets really red compared to the rest of the skin. And it almost looks like on this page, you can see like how much more rosacea she has hiding under the surface that you may not be able to appreciate here, right? So it's nice because it brings out all of those layers that we're worried about. Here's the other side. Nice, maybe not as much over here, but you can see all those pigments kind of um, uh, that are hanging out that she wants getting taken care of as well. I can see it on the nose. And then that corner, that nice rosacea patch there, right after treatment, very good results. And this is about a week later. Okay, you can see, yeah, that big patch is still kind of there. Usually the ones in the corner are still kind of there, but overall we're seeing a lot more of a clear <clears throat> uh, complexion. Some of that pigment's still there on the nose, right underneath the eyes, and that's okay. But this is only after one treatment. I don't, I tell patients, I don't expect to see drastic improvements after one treatment. It's gonna be a session. You need maybe three, four, sometimes five, six treatments to completely get taken care of these uh, rosacea uh, spots that we have. Here's after four treatments. <clears throat> kind of drastic change, right? But she does have a little bit of moisturizer on, so it looks pretty glossy. Um, but yeah, in the corners, you don't really see those rosacea. Look at all the pigment that's been cleared up, a nice kind of clear complexion. The chin doesn't have any of those little patches anymore, but doing really well after four treatments, about three months later. And then here is the notes from my exam. So rosacea is cleared, no telangiectasias on the eyelid margin, great expression about 90%, with a little bit of that turbid expression still there, but a lot better. And she doesn't have hypersensitive lips. Um, I can actually go and touch her eyelids without her flinching and reacting, right? All that rosacea is calmed down. Um, her T-butt is improved drastically, still not perfect, about eight seconds. So I, I like that above 10. And then her nip is a lot better with contacts, about 12.8 seconds. Still taking the prostaglandin, no more SPK. And of course, the most important thing for me is a happy patient. She usually comes back every six months for touch-up IPL, but also she now comes to me for Botox, PRP injections. Now just wants IPL because it makes her skin look good. And it also helps her dryness. <laughs> And then here's more of a cosmetic treatment. Sorry, I, I noticed this uh, picture here on the left is a little pixelated, but um, 
Here's right before treatment and right after. Her skin is more maybe a type one, type two. Um, so it reacted a little bit more. She was kind of worried about some blemishes on her cheeks, maybe on her forehead a little bit. And then um, notice the sunburn look, right? So I tell patients after care, expect to maybe feel like your skin is a little bit warm for a few hours. And then that pink redness usually is maybe a day or two. So I expect them, hey, if you're maybe, I don't know, going out to dinner with a hot date, maybe postpone it a couple of days just in case, you know, but you're fine afterwards to use normal cover up or makeup or anything like that. Just don't use any retinols or glycolic acids or anything like that. Um, so this is just right after their first treatment. Here's two days later, she sent me a picture. This is actually my best friend's wife right here and she's making faces in the, in the background. So that's why I kind of blocked her out, but um, she works at a dentist's office. And so she just sent me a picture, just gave her my phone number and said, hey, text me. I'm actually kind of intrigued to see how your skin uh, reacts. But look at all of that coming out to the surface, kind of crazy. Um, looks great honestly and she kind of texted me freaking out I was like oh my gosh my face looks so bad but she said luckily she wears masks in her office so it kind of covered up most of it but I warned her I said hey when we're doing pigment treatments or skin treatments there's a lot of stuff that will come to the surface big thing is don't pick at it don't try to get those little blemishes off because that can create scarring just let them naturally slough off when you're doing your face wash or in the shower, cleansing your face, whatever it may be. And you'll notice that it'll just kind of naturally come off. You can actually feel these. It feels like almost little pepper flakes on your skin. Um, but yeah, that's just two days later. Here's five days after. So still, yeah, a little bit of blemish is still on the surface, kind of on these cheek and jawline. It's just typically where I see it stays a little bit longer. But most important thing, nice big smile, happy patient. <laughs> but she is continuing treatment right now. And so um, I'll have some after photos maybe in a couple of weeks just to do the before and afters, but overall doing a lot better, happy patient. So um, I get this question asked to me a, a lot. When do you use uh, IPL? And my answer is yes. <laughs> um, for some reason, that little dues report didn't pull up. So let me go back to that really quick. So if you notice, if you read step two, it talks about maybe doing some um, tea tree oil for Demodex, talks about doing punctal occlusion, uh, moisture chamber, lipoflow, but also in step two, after they've maybe failed one or two of these, it wants you to go right into doing um, IPL. So I think it is maybe Typically, what I do is like, okay, initial presentation, we're going to try out maybe doing some warm compresses and omega-3s, fix your diet. Let's see you back in maybe, I don't know, a month or two. And then they come back. If that didn't work very well, okay, let's do IPL, right? So it is interesting to me that in the dues report, their second treatment that they recommend along with, I mean, all those other things, but their second thing that they want you to do is IPL. So Yeah, sorry, it just didn't copy and paste. I was going to underline that, but no, oh, there we go. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just thought it was interesting that it is in step two. Um, here's some other <clears throat> treatments that we do for MGD. Uh, I've noticed during the summer, most people are going out, going on vacation, going to the beach, getting nice tans. IPL doesn't work as good if they have a full tan. So I always tell them, hey, maybe in between vacations, let's do IPL when your skin's not as tan. Because remember, pigment is gonna collect that light and cause it so it doesn't maybe uh, work as well. Um, but now is a great time to do IPL over the winter because everyone's inside, their skin's a little bit more fair, but we have a solution for people that do tan a lot and it is just radio frequency, right? And the goal is to help deliver consistent heating and warming to the meibomian glands so that the oils melt and get it so they express a lot better. And also, I've been doing a lot of research. I've been seeing that conversation on ODs on Finance and then OS Docs on Facebook as well uh, about the um, 
conjunctival calasis about how that excess conj can just create that frictional inflammation, which radio frequency actually helps kind of tighten that so you don't get that friction. Um, there's been a bit of research that you can do small doses of radio frequency uh, two times a week just to help out with lid margin abnormalities, help with corneal staining, <coughs> and then of course, help out with meibomian gland structure. Um, and here's another treatment using low light laser therapy, or low level laser light therapy, I should say. Um, and then same thing, everything that I've researched, I, it doesn't really know the mechanism of action really well for dryness or MGD, but we know it has a biomodulation effective on lids and uh, meibomian glands, kind of similar to IPL, but it's done over a longer time period. So they're usually sitting there for about 30 minutes just with that there. There's different protocols for that, but I'll show you a protocol that um, I found that I thought was really interesting. But it works really well in combination with IPL, okay? And there was a retrospective study of about 460 patients that were doing combo IPL and LLLT treatment. Um, after the treatments, the OSDI scores on those patients dropped from 70% to about 30% saying they still had dryness. So about a 40% difference. And then their T butt scores went from less than six seconds, <clears throat> or T butt scores of less than six seconds went from 86% of patients down to 34%. So a huge difference in that um, tear breakup time, adding more moisture on the surface. Um, yeah, and then soon to come, as you guys heard, in January, this will be available through Optometric Aesthetics. Um, and here's a suggested thing that I just saw on Google. They have a suggested price. I'm not trying to collude and tell you guys what to do. Um, I don't even have this treatment yet, so I don't know what I'm gonna be charging right, but this is just kind of what they suggested. But this is just a normal type, like Dr. Chisholm was uh, talking about. There's different settings that you can do, red, yellow, blue light, and then infrared as well. Of course, cleanse the face, make sure after treatments you're using SPF, same thing with IPL, put a little bit of SPF on before they leave and about two days before two treatments for um, LLT. For IPL, it's about every two to three weeks is when I'm seeing patients. Um, but here's some sample kind of protocols, okay? So if we are wanting skin rejuvenation or acne or some type of lifting and pigment, there's different settings that they want you to do per session, right? So for example, skin recovery, they want you to do a red, infrared, um, flipping in between, and that is every session. So the eight sessions, you'll see that patient, you are doing that setting. But when we get into more like sensitive skin, we're trying to hit maybe more layers, you might go from yellow to blue light to red to infrared, right? Kind of alternating which depth we're trying to get. So that will be fun to incorporate. I'm probably gonna be doing that in January and get that taken care of and start adding that to my practice. Um, on, just a quick, two minutes left. <laughs> Okay, perfect. Now I'm almost done, so that's great. <laughs> um, advanced treatments of MGD. These are some other things I'm doing in my practice. Biggest things are amniotic membranes, serum tears, Blefex, and PRP drops. Um, you guys probably know more about amniotic tissues, um, help stimulate corneal regeneration, anti-inflammatory, anti-scarring. There's a lot of pro things that help in it. It brings in VEGF human growth factor. Um, if you don't know how to do it, definitely reach out to a colleague and see if they can help you learn how to place a membrane. We do a thing in Utah where we do like wet labs for the UOA. So I host them in my office or different offices where we teach people how to do membrane placement. We're going to teach people how to do IPL, radio frequency, blood draws. So um, this is one thing I do a lot of as well, controlling the inflammation long-term we're doing PRP or ACEDs or autologous serum. Three-step process can collect the blood in the office or send it out for collection. I just do it all in the office because it's easy. And then we're going to wait for the blood to coagulate and then um, use a centrifuge to separate it into the serum that we want and collect that. Okay. And then we're putting them into droppers for patients. BLEFX, this is something I do. The biggest thing I don't like about it is it has consumables, <laughs> but it works really well for patients that need it. 
And here is that patient before that we saw earlier, right? And here's after, kind of just do a little pause. So nice and clean, not as much of those um, little uh, uh, proteins and deposits on the eyelids. And then once we get up to the top eyelashes, I just want to show you this difference. So there's her extensions. You can barely see through it. And I told her this is probably what will happen. She has a lot of missing eyelashes. So we had to kind of take those off and it pulled off a few and then she was already missing some. Um, let me just show you. So on my Instagram, if you go look at my stories, we have more videos about it, but this is kind of our process in the office. We get about 12 5 ml vials when we do a blood draw and a dispense. And then we have, I hired an MA, her name's Lexi. She's great, probably my best favorite uh, employee that I have, but don't tell anyone else. But she is awesome. She does blood draws really quick, does them a lot better than me. Um, but she will do a blood draw and then we wait for the blood to coagulate. Then we centrifuge it for 30 minutes. And once it's centrifuged, this is what it looks like over here. You get that nice plasma, and then you have all the red blood cells and other ingredients down there that we don't want, and that nice buffer separation, okay? Then we are going to draw it into a syringe like this, about 30 milliliters on this side of serum, 35-ish of saline. So that's about a 50% serum. And then we are going to mix it in the office, make it one nice liquid. Then we use a filtering system to put them into bottles to get rid of any other excess components that we don't want. And then you get nice bottles that you take home. So that's nice. Um, this is just an example of an expression I did. Patient that doesn't like going to doctor, doesn't want to do IPL, so I just express them, and this is always what happens. <laughs> um, one last minute just talking about revenue and kind of the finance part of it. I recommend make a goal start somewhere maybe start out trying to get one new patient a week that's what i did i just was like hey you know what i'm going to try to get one patient and then i moved to two patients and then i moved to five patients right and so this right here is typically what i'm doing each a month okay i'm priced out about 400 dollars. and remember i'm not telling you where to price i have seen as low as 150 dollars, as high as 500 but I'm about doing four to five treatments a week. So that's about an extra eight grand a month, which is great. My dad always says I'm paying for my own paycheck. So, <laughs> um, and then same thing with the ACEDS is I like to compete with sequel restasis and Zydra. That's kind of their yearly price cash pay. And I don't have to deal with PAs. So I'm doing it a combination with IPL. I'm charging around 375. So per year, they're usually doing two draws. So it's just an extra 750, 750 for my practice. And so um, if I get four new patients a month, it's $39,000 a year increased revenue, right? Um, final tips, be confident and prescribe. Don't ever recommend. Something I learned in optometry school and it's been awesome for me. You're the doctor, you know what's good for them. Tell them they're doing IPL and be confident. Um, look at the cheeks, chin, and nose. Look for that rosacea. Work with lo local ophthalmologists for pre and post LASIK care. Find your own routine. I started out with Dr. Perriman and Dr. Toyos's pr protocols kind of combined. And then I went and transitioned to my own. So for example, I don't do expression over on every single visit because of those hypersensitive lids. I only do it on the third and fourth treatment. And then people ask me all the time about corneal shields. I use them just so I can do the upper lids. I know a lot of doctors don't, and that's totally fine. And then my last tip is get into aesthetics. It will open up so many branches for your practice. Add Botox, fillers, PRP, microneedling into your practice, and start a med spa with the NP or MD friend. Um, and that's the way to contact me. And that is all I have for you. So thanks for having me. I appreciate Odie's on Finance for letting me come and hang out with you guys this morning. Awesome. Thank you so much, Colin. That was a ton of great information. I appreciate you. We got a ton of questions as well, which we're going to answer in just a little bit. But what I want to do next, so the CE portion is done. So individuals that need to take off, feel free. But we do have a fantastic panel coming up. So I do recommend that everyone stay on for the next 20, 30 minutes. And then we'll also have a raffle afterwards for an Amazon gift card. So let me just give a quick introduction. 
to our other two panelists. And after I give the introduction, Anne is actually going to jump on. She's going to give about a seven minute presentation on the financials and how to bring this into private practice. And it's going to be fantastic information. We can't record it, so it's only going to be live since it's proprietary. So definitely stay on, tune in for that. So let me introduce Anne first. She's a native of Caledonia, Minnesota. She received her doctor of optometry degree from the University of Houston College of Optometry. She completed a residency in ocular disease hospital-based optometry at Albuquerque VA Medical Center. Her professional experience also included serving as assistant clinical professor and clinical director at Nova Southeastern Eastern University. Uh, she launched her third startup in 2016, iBridge Consulting Associates which provides consulting services to the eye care industry with a focus on strategic growth initiatives and practice transitions. As she's received numerous other honors and awards, including the prestigious Athena International Leadership Award, the Diversified Business Professionals Advocacy Award, and JC's Distinguished Service Award. She's been recognized in Vision Monday's Optometric Business Innovators and 40 Women with Vision. And just a quick intro for Nicole, she's gonna be jumping on in just a second as well. She's a successful entrepreneur with a background in business strategy and marketing. She started a a a K I N Aesthetics and Wellness three years ago and has won Salt Lake City's Best Med Spa for the last two years. This last year, she launched Aesthetics in an eye care clinic using IPL as the gateway treatment to aesthetics. She's passionate about creating a <laughs> patient experience, building aesthetic departments, and seeing others succeed. And with that being said, I'm going to pass the floor on to Anne, and she's going to go ahead and jump right into her presentation. Fantastic, Erin. Thank you for that kind introduction. And I'm just excited to be here and talk about what I love, which is <clears throat> ocular surface disease. And I have become a big fan of uh, aesthetics. And after practicing for a couple of decades, I love kind of being the wind beneath people's wings, whereby um, it's actually more that we will role play, we'll listen to recordings. If you're not sure you're communicating well with your patients, and do whatever sort of clinical mentoring that you need to be successful. So there you have it. My quick tips as fast as I can talk, because I know we've been on this for a while this morning. Success is in your hands and it's an honor and I appreciate the opportunity to be here. And here's just uh, my email, website and number. And if you've been on this call, please uh, reach out via text or my email. Let me know and I'm happy to schedule a 30 minute consult. Talk about where you're at, where you wanna go and if we can support you in any way. And due to the wonderful leadership of ODs on Finance, we have come up with two things that reduce consulting rate for those docs who are involved in ODs on Finance. And also we've put together some packages that work nicely with the new technology that's available to make it really affordable to get some plug and play things that are customized to your practice so that you have monumental success. With that, um, I'm gonna stop sharing, give Nicole the floor, and of course, hang around for whatever questions you've got before we're done this morning. All right, fantastic. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and give the floor, and Chris <laughs> is gonna actually lead the panel discussion here. So Chris, I'm gonna let you take it away. Yeah, sounds good. Uh, the, the chat box has been crazy. The Q&A box has been crazy. So I know uh, hundreds of our colleagues are really interested in what y'all have to say. So we have a ton of questions and we have a, a six minute Q&A. So we'll, we'll try to get through as many as we can. Um, so, so question for the panel, if someone is interested in bringing this into the practice, but they don't really have an interest in, in practicing aesthetics, what advice do you have looking for an associate, uh, hiring an aesthetician? What, what kind of advice do you have? I think that's for Nicole, or is that for me, Chris? Anyone on the panel, feel free to go. Let's sorry, can you, sorry, can you repeat that course. really quickly? We were just jumping in um, the same screen together real quick. Yeah, so what, would you, uh, what advice would you have for a practice owner who wants to bring this into the practice but doesn't necessarily have an interest in practicing aesthetics themselves? Should they look for an associate or hire an esthetician? Yeah. So, I mean, every state is different with your state laws. So definitely check what estheticians can do in your state. Um, but in our practice, we have our estheticians perform the majority of the IPL treatments. So if it's not something you're passionate about, find um, an associate, find an employee who loves doing IPLs, loves doing aesthetics, um, because excitement breeds excitement. 
So find the most excited person, you know, make sure they're trained well and have that person in charge of doing those treatments for you. Awesome. So because state laws differ, can you talk on uh, the the impact of uh, having a medical director? How do you find them? What that's like and how does that work? Yeah, great question. So I would recommend if you're bringing in any type of aesthetic treatments, you know, IPLs for pigmentation, microneedling, to definitely find a medical director. And so the best way to do it is just to start asking your colleagues, like, do you know any nurse practitioners? Do you know any MDs, ODs, um, DOs, or who can basically come and be your medical director? And if they don't know anyone, um, or if they don't wanna do it, ask who they know. Um, I feel we found ours just from asking the people that we know, um, and then we brought them into the practice. Awesome. So obviously a big part of uh, having a successful aesthetic uh, practice is getting staff to be on board. How do you go about doing that? Um, again, I would find, first of all, I would introduce, introduce the topic to your team. Um, and then the staff member who reacts the happiest that you're bringing aesthetics in, I would make them the lead person for your aesthetics department. They're in charge of your phone calls, your follow-ups, reaching out to all your leads, and also getting the rest of your team excited um, about doing aesthetic treatments. And so again, if you're pumped about it and um, I don't know if you're just excited about bringing aesthetics, like honestly, your staff just gets excited about new technology, new services, and most importantly, new ways that they can help your patients. Nicole, if I can dovetail onto that, that um, you are obviously going to find somebody percolate to the top. And if you can have a secondary person, just because we know what happens with turnover, but also every employee who wants a procedure should be treated and make sure that they experience it, they understand the treatment. And if you're doing skincare products or something, uh, other dry treatments, make sure everybody in your practice has an opportunity to experience it because the patients are more likely to ask Nicole or other staff members questions than they're gonna ask us as docs. I say from hello to goodbye, the staff really needs to be well-trained on both procedures and products. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So to actually to piggyback off that medical director question, how do you compensate that medical director? So in our industry or in Utah, we've kind of seen two different options. Um, we personally just pay a flat fee every month. Um, there are other offices that do a commission structure. Um, I feel it's easier for us to pay a flat fee because it doesn't matter how great our month is. Um, they're not taking away from your profits as much. And so I would just talk with your medical director and see what they're looking for or what they're wanting. Um, and either a flat fee or a commission percentage is the norm. Gotcha, okay. Um, so most offices I, I hope are, are charging patients out of pocket for these uh, premium services. How do you go about discussing these higher fees with, uh, with patients and handling any possible pushback to the, to the out of pocket expenses? Is this for me? A any, anyone on the panel? <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'll answer. If someone else wants to jump in, go right ahead. <laughs> go for I it. Don't know. For me, I'll, I'll jump in real quick. So for me, um, so in our in our practice, I think you know the conversation comes up uh, something medically that they need. Uh, I I try quickly uh, transferring it to the aesthetic benefits that you can get with these services. Uh, people know that aesthetics isn't covered by insurance. And so, and that's what really kind of piques their interest a lot of times too, is as soon as they start to know that they're getting kind of dual help with this treatment, uh, they're getting some of the rosacea off their face or their pigment spots or some of those things uh, that they really, uh, I would say they're, they're, it's easy, an easier sell. I would say there's a lot of value that comes with this treatment. Yeah, I'll... I'll I'll answer that as well. Um, typically, I mean, patients that are I'm seeing are typically referred to me, a lot of them that are looking for IPL. And so they've already tried two or three other docs and other treatments, right? And so when I offer this, they I usually don't get any pushback. Um, like I said, I'm at $400 a treatment. Um, I do package it. If they do the full bundle, I do a little $50 off a treatment type of thing. But um, I... Honestly, I've never really had a huge pushback. It's maybe like, oh, let me talk to my husband or let me talk to my wife and then I'll reschedule. 
But the biggest thing that I think works really well in our office is don't let them get out of the door without a follow-up exam already scheduled. That's where you're going to get that retention. And they might just come back and I just say, yeah, come back for a follow-up and we'll discuss <laughs> more if we need to, right? But just don't let them go out the door without having a follow-up already scheduled. Gotcha. And anything to, to add to that? Um, I think also with the aesthetics, there's a lot of opportunities. There are patients who don't necessarily want to show up at a plastic surgeon's office. Um, I encountered that personally, and they they were happy to go and not only do the dry treatment, but the aesthetic component at the eye doctor's office. Like it's, I have an eye doctor's appointment today and didn't have to deal with anything, anything else that would go with that. But also for men, I am seeing an uptake in males in the optometry practices. Again, for guys who say, well, I don't really want to be seen at the plastic surgeon's office every month, but they might come in for a series of aesthetic treatments and skincare at their eye doctor's office. So this is not just for female ODs. I think that's a lot of misconception. I love seeing that we've got a room full of men here today on this panel because you guys have an incredible opportunity to commun that communicate this. And I think men are more likely to spend the money because they want a treatment that is going to be effective and require less maintenance on a day-to-day -day basis also. Women, we're used to it. But again, do not underestimate the uptake in your males. I'm going to add one little thing. I think one uh, important thing is our patients trust us as well. So when we recommend something, they take that and they understand, you know, they, they have, we've built a trust with them. So when you give a, a recommendation, they, they, they do what we ask. Yeah, I agree hundred percent there, Mike. So uh, for docs on the panel, in, in your mind is IPL uh, RF first line treatment for dry eye MGD in your opinion, or is that something that should be reserved once other uh, treatment options are exhausted? Mike, do you want to take that one? Um, I can, yes. Um, so in my practice, um, as far as a, an eye doctor in, in what I do, in, um, I, I think that there's, there's many ways you can use it. Um, so as far as the iLight IPL um, machine, it's FDA approved for aesthetics. Um, as far as the dry eye part, uh, I'm using uh, it uh, beginning. Uh, so even someone who has very mild contact lens intolerance. Uh, so there's, there's a wide range of, you know, where you can start the uh, process. Um, and I do a lot of aesthetics. And so it may not necessarily be completely for what they're thinking or what maybe a lot of eye doctors are doing for more of the dry eye part of it. Uh, so I, I do, and I push uh, more of the aesthetics. And I think that kind of sells uh, to the patients. They like that part of it. Um, so I, I use it for all ranges, I guess, depending on from very beginning to uh, someone who's referred and tried everything, essentially. Yeah, and I'll, uh, the kind of that dues report I was showing, it's kind of interesting just how it says it's step two, which most patients coming to you, they say they have dry eyes, they've already tried step one, tried a lubrication. They may not be educated on the health benefits of it, right? So that's probably my step one, I'd say, is like, hey, let's change your diet. Let's add more water to consumption. Let's add an omega-3, kind of natural, long-term ways to help out, right? But yeah, I would say I'm very early in going with IPL and getting that going. Because I mean, according to Dew's report, it's step two, so. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. So many patients with uh, MGD are, are not very symptomatic. So how do you, how do you go about um, uh, selling a uh, process or a treatment option like this when, when they're not really uh, bothered too much by symptoms. Yeah, I can take that one again, but uh, I kind I saw that question in the little Q and A and got me thinking, oh yeah, I use my camera a ton. Um, I'm taking videos or pictures on every single patient that comes in. I may not be saving them to a chart or anything, but for those that I see MGD that are asymptomatic, I'm like, hey, let me show you what's going on with your glands. Here are pictures of your glands underneath the surface. They should be like this, but they're tiny, right? So what are we going to do about that and make it so you don't have these symptoms later? It's trying to talk to a diabetic that might be pre-diabetic, right? So how do we prevent that? Where right now, they're asymptomatic, but maybe in 
two, three years, they might be having to use insulin all the time. Right. But same thing, just use pictures. I think that's the best thing for my practice. It's helped it grow a ton is pictures. And then later you can email those to the patient and be like, yeah, this is what your glands look like today. And after your IPL treatments, this is what they look like now. Right. So pictures have helped a ton for me. Colin, I love what you just said about the pre-diabetic. I think that's just such a great analogy that patients can really understand. And I had written in the chat that if they have, um, if they're headed into considering refractive surgery or cataract surgery, it's almost really not an option. If we want a good outcome, you may not realize that this is going to be a problem, but it will be. So we're going to treat this so that whatever we're going forward is going to be more successful. Yeah. So um, uh, kind of segueing into a, a different area, but what are your, what are your all's thoughts on optimizing the ocular surface? using something like this prior to cataract or refractive surgery? Because I don't think we, we talk enough about that. Couldn't agree more. I think um, I've got a practice that's working on a clinical protocol right now for all of their doctors. They have 14 ODs and they are pretty much going to recommend part of the pre-op the pre for cataract surgery include MGD as um, imaging, lysamine staining, and they are then going to, if need be, put the patient in with the dry eye specialist, because not all of the doctors do it, to get their ocular surface optimized. And they have got the ophthalmology support 100% because the ophthalmologists know they're going to look good and have a better outcome. All right. Um, so one more question. I know there's not one right way or one accepted way to perform IPO. Thoughts on treating upper lids and, and thoughts on corneal shields versus not using corneal shields? Um, I think there's been good studies for pro and not doing it. I know I think specifically Dr. Toyos is one that doesn't. Um, and Dr. Perriman, I think, is one that usually does. Those are kind of the two thought leaders that I started out following and just learning from them. But I personally do. Um, I have seen a lot of benefits for people that have those kind of recurrent styes or chalazines coming in on those upper lids that I'm just like, yeah, might as well knock it out. It's another maybe, I don't know, four or five minutes of my time and patients like it. And it allows me afterwards, if I'm doing a facial, I can kind of get up towards the corner and do all the other benefits as well. So I personally do, but I know, yeah, a lot of docs don't. So, All right. Well, let's do one more question. Let's hear. This is a good one. So when you're uh, thinking about adding a, a dry eye spa, would you just kind of keep that within your current company or, or would you create a new company for that purpose? And, and, and this will be the last question here. I was actually just starting to type a, a response to that, Chris. So um, I think it really varies that when I'm working with a client, it's a, often the first place that we start. Are there compelling reasons to have a second business. For instance, do you want to get out of your eye care practice and only have uh, the med spa or dry eye aesthetic side of it? So you've got to ask that question. I would say what most practices do is and they cut and the answer is about 50-50 that they may create a separate brand, logo, color scheme or whatever for their med spa side, but they are still under one umbrella. But like, just like an optical, they do have a cost center where they're tracking the expenses and income from that. But Mike, you and Nicole have unique situation. I'd love for you to weigh in on that. Um, so I agree. I think it's 50-50. Um, and so there's kind of two benefits of having it be under like the same business name, the same brochure, the same everything is just consistency with your patients. Your patients know you, they trust you. If it's your business still, same name, same everything, it's a very smooth transition into the aesthetics room or your aesthetics area. Um, but on the flip side, it's a new concept to have patients come in and get aesthetics treatments done by an eye doctor, right? And so there are huge benefits to still having it under the same umbrella, but having it be like a different name, the, you know, something aesthetics. That way, I, I don't know, it just, um, it just helps the transition between patients' brains of like my eye doctor is giving me a facial or my like this isn't normal. Um, and so it really depends on your patients. It depends on your location. Um, but I feel both options have benefits. It just kind of depends on where you're at. 
Awesome. Mike, for those interested, would you share information about the, the units again in the chat box, please? And Aaron, you can take it away. Panel, thanks a lot. Cool. Yeah, thank you, panel. That was fantastic. A lot of great questions and great answers for our audience. So appreciate all of you from coming for coming on, Mike, Nicole, Anne, and Colin as well. Thank you very much. And I'm going to pass it over to Mike for a little bit, and he's going to talk more about the combo machine. I know we got a few questions. So Mike, floor is all yours. Awesome. Yeah. So thanks for all the questions and for uh, being here. So I just wanted to share kind of the deal, the promo we have with Odeon Finance. This is for this month. So uh, just taking the deposit is all that's needed. So it's a $500 deposit that essentially holds your machine and allows you to get the deal. Um, I have been working with uh, offices that are starting cold and, and, and they're not doing it until June, July. So there's no really time frame we hold it. Uh, uh, if, if there's any other deals we do before there, which I don't think we're going to do anything, we can kind of honor the best deal to kind of get there. So the $500 would basically hold your machine and, and bring it in when you're ready for it. So uh, typically it's $39,900. So it's $2,500 off the price. Um, I did have a question on somebody had asked about the LLLT device as well. So that one is, uh, is price is $21,900. And then there's an $8,000 aesthetic head that is optional. I know some people are more focused on one thing versus the other. So I wanted to separate those two, mostly because you can kind of keep the price as low as possible if you want, and or if you don't plan on doing aesthetics. Um, and that's the one that will be coming out in January as well. So, and then I'll show here uh, the uh, different QR codes. So if you are interested in getting or wanting to talk more or learn more, uh, the far left one here is to leave a deposit. And then the middle one here is to scan to go to the website to go to learn more about what uh, the IPL involves and just information about it. And then schedule a call. So these calls, uh, I'm going to be opening up a bunch of these. They're going to, I'm getting notifications that people are going on my website. So people are going awesome. Uh, but the far right one is uh, for a call. So if you want to uh, schedule a call, this is a Zoom call that we can kind of see face to face. You can see the machine in action. So this is the guy right here. I don't know if you can see, I'm probably small, so it's too small. Um, but just to see kind of what it does. And then um, I'm free to text as well. So um I think on my website has my phone number. So that's actually, you can send texts or calls to that as well. Um, I'm in clinic here and there. So if I miss your call, leave a message and then uh, I'll get back to you as soon as possible too. Awesome. So take a screenshot of this. This will give you all the information you need. Uh, apart from there, let me open up my uh, chat stuff. See if there's any other questions, any other questions that people have. Oh yeah, so financing, a question about that. So uh, I've worked primarily with, and uh, not seclusive, but to, or exclusive, but with uh, Vision One. So uh, it's a vision um, or optometrist run financing group that does really good deals as far as interest rates super low. You can get your machine as low as $750 a month. So it's something that is very reasonable doing one treatment you're making a month, you make money with this. So uh, they've been really good to work with. Uh, so that's a, a great way to get this in your office without needing to put a lot down or anything. Um, any other questions? <laughs> that's it. All right. Cool. And reach out to me if you have any questions. You're, you're welcome to send me a, a text, an email. I don't know if I'll put my email address on the uh, chat as well. So right now it will come on. Fantastic. Yeah, feel free to scan those QR codes. If you're ready to buy, scan the one on the left. Uh, if you want a little bit more information and want to have Mike help you out, scan the one on the right. And if you want general information, scan the one in the middle. All right. And let's jump right into our final thing, which is, of course, the raffle. <laughs> <laughs> Got to give you $100 for coming out yeah. in the morning. <laughs> so our lucky raffle winner is Betsy Shu. So Betsy Shu, uh, that's S-H-Y-U. If you are in the audience, uh, email us, admin at odysonfinance.com. You just want $100 that you can splurge on Amazon. And you could get like four of those Mybomian gland expressors for 100 bucks. So might as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I want to give a special thank you to Colin 
for a fantastic lecture. Uh, also to Mike for kind of putting this whole thing on and for Anne and Nicole for jumping onto the panel. Everyone did a fantastic job, a lot of good information on advanced treatment of dry eye anesthetics as well. So thank you all. And just a quick reminder, our last event of the year is coming up in two weeks. We got the Bryans talking about how they netted a million. Scan that QR code to sign up. And otherwise, we are all set. Any last words from the panel or from the speakers? I'm just excited that so many folks were here on a Sunday and uh, our profession grows as uh, the practices embrace these new technologies and services. Go get them, docs. Happy holidays. Yeah, thanks for having us. All right. Well, happy December. We'll see everyone in a couple of weeks. Once again, thank you to everyone that signed on today. Have a great rest of your Sunday. Enjoy some football.